Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Google Play Games in Unity to make achievements and leaderboards. We're gonna take a look at saved games in another video. Firstly, you'll need to download the Unity package from the link in the description. Then you'll install it like this. You will go to the download location while the Unity editor is open and uh, install it. Double click, click on import. And that's it. Then you wanna go to the Google Play Developer Console, go to the Game Services, and add new game. I've already added a game, so I'm just gonna open it. Then you're gonna add achievements and leaderboards. I've already added them and left them at the default settings, except that I changed one achievement to be incremental like this. So, achievements, incremental achievement, and I've ticked that it is incremental, and I've put here a value of 100. This tutorial is gonna be really generic because I feel that you can learn more when you don't clutter up the code and UI with unnecessary stuff. We have only two achievements and one leaderboard, which will basically contain the highest count of button presses. Simple, but clutter free. Then after you've created achievements and leaderboards, you wanna go to the Unity editor and change the current platform to Android. You can do this by going to File, Build Settings, and choose Android from this menu and click on Switch Platform. And now the platform is switched to Android. As you can see, Google Play Games plugin for Unity is showing us some message. We're gonna click on OK. And uh, now we can actually use this plugin. So we'll go to Window, Google Play Games and Setup, Android Setup. And as you can see, we need Resources Definition. We can obtain these resources at Google Play Developer Console by going to either Achievements or Leaderboards and clicking on Get Resources. You want to get the Android resources. Just gonna copy everything, go back to Unity, paste this in here, and click on Setup. You can leave these fields as they are or you can change the name of the classes or the directory, but I'm gonna leave it the default. Click on Setup, it's gonna take a while again. Resolution complete and Google Play Games configured successfully, so that's awesome. Also, if you wanna build for Android, just make sure that you have SDK and JDK installed. You can check if you have it in Preferences and external tools, Android, SDK, and JDK. However, I'm not going to go over the process of their installation and setup in this video. Now we are ready to write some code. We're going to start with the code specific to Google Play Games. We'll create a script called Play Games Script. So create C Sharp Script, Play Games Script. All right, open it up in Visual Studio. First up, we can delete these using statements and uh, add our own using statements. We're gonna need to be using Google Play Games, also Google Play Games basic API. Then in the start method, we're gonna need to initialize and activate Google Play Games services. We can delete the update method as we are not gonna need it in this script. And then in the void start, we'll write Play games client configuration. Games client configuration, name it for example config. Equals new. Play games client configuration dot builder dot or yeah builder dot build. And here you can specify if you wanna turn on some features like enable saved games, but for now we don't want to turn anything on. 
then we want to initialize the play games platform instance so play games platform dot initialize instance with the play games client configuration that we've just created named config then we're gonna activate this play games platform by doing play games platform dot activate then we want to sign in the user of our game so we're gonna write a method void sign in and this method is going to do one simple thing just sign in the user so you'll write social dot local user dot authenticate and this requires a callback so we're just gonna do success and a little lambda here and we don't want to do anything in the callback however you could print something out of the screen you could lock, lock something or do whatever you want then we want to call this sign in method from the start method we could put this line of code directly into the start method however this is better for clarity reasons now we can actually start dealing with achievements we'll create a region call it achievements just so that we can actually navigate the code comfortably and we want to have a method for unlocking achievement so public void unlock achievement and this method is going to accept an id of an achievement which is a string so string id and we want to do in this method social dot report progress achievement id is the string id that you supply to this method as an argument so id double progress is going to be 100 because we want to straight up unlock it and we have to have a callback here we're again not gonna do anything fancy then we also have an incremental achievement so we need to have a method to increment an achievement so public void increment achievement and this is going to accept also a string id but also steps to increment the achievement so int steps to increment and we are not going to use social.reportProgress method for this we are going to use another method because report progress is not really good for incremental achievements from google play games we are going to call play games platform dot instance which is a singleton instance dot increment achievement and achievement id is id steps is steps to increment steps to increment and callback we are again gonna leave it simple here we are also gonna need to have a method which we are gonna call to show the achievements ui show achievements ui and we are gonna simply call social dot show achievements ui now let's go onto the leaderboards i'm going to create another region and in this region there are going to be only two methods add score to leaderboard and show leaderboards ui so public void add score to leaderboard and this is going to accept a leaderboard id and a long score we're going to simply call social dot report score we need to supply the long score also the board which is our leaderboard id and again we need to supply a callback and that's it for play games script as you could already see i've created a simple ui the get point and restart button will increment some count variable and the value of that variable will be displayed on the screen however we don't have any count variable yet so let's create a small script which will handle that so we're gonna create a script and call it manager script we're gonna need to keep track of an instance 
of manager script. This would normally be implemented as a singleton, but because I have only one scene in this, let's call it the game, I don't need to create a singleton. Just keep that in mind when you're actually gonna be coding inside your game with multiple scenes. So we're gonna create a public static manager script instance, which is gonna be a property with public getter, get and private set. Then we also need the counter variable. So public static int counter. And this is also public get and private set. Then in the void start, we're gonna set this instance to this particular instance. So instance equals this. Then we're gonna have a method called increment counter, which is gonna be invoked whenever a player clicks on get point. So public void increment counter. And in here, for now, we're gonna do just counter plus plus, so we're just gonna increment counter. We also need to have a method called restart game, which is gonna be invoked whenever a player clicks on restart button. So again, this is gonna be public void restart, or rather restart game. And in here, we actually want to add the current value of the counter variable to the leaderboard. So we're gonna call a static method in our play games script class, so games script dot add score to leaderboard. Oh yeah, I see, I'm a very big dummy and I actually didn't specify that these methods should be static, so let's do it right now. So static and this is also gonna be static. Everything is gonna be static in here. All right, cool. So we want to add score to leaderboard and the leaderboard ID is stored in the class that was generated by the Google Play Games Services plugin, which is this GPGS IDs. So we want to get GPGS IDs dot leaderboard leaderboard and the score is the counter value. Then we want to reset the counter to zero. Now, after we've made the manager script, we're gonna write a script that deals directly with the UI. We're gonna name it UI script. And we're again gonna keep track of a current instance of the UI script. This is again something that you should implement as a singleton in your real project. So public static UI script instance, and again, get and only private set. And in the start method, we're gonna set the instance to this particular instance. We need to keep a reference to this text here. So for that to happen, we actually need to be using unityengine.ui. Now we can create a text variable, private text, points text, and serialize field so that it shows up in the Unity editor. And then we'll have methods which are gonna be called from these buttons. So we'll have six methods altogether. The first one is for get point button. So public void get point. And this is going to be calling the increment counter method in our manager script. So manager script, we want to get the instance of the manager script and uh, increment counter. Then we need to have a method for the restart button. So public void restart restart and we again want to call the method in the manager script so restart game then we want to have a method which is going to handle the incrementing of an achievement so public void increment and we want to call a method in our play games script dot increment achievement and the id of an achievement is gpgsids dot achievement incremental achievement and we want to increment it by for example five steps we also want to have a method for unlocking an achievement. Again, public void, unlock, and we want to call play game script dot unlock achievement. The ID is GPGS IDs dot achievement standard achievement. We also want to have methods here for showing the achievements UI and also the leaderboards UI. 
public void show achievements. This is simply going to call play games script dot show achievements UI and public void show leaderboards, which is going to call play games script dot show leaderboards UI. And again, something's not good here. Oh, that's because I didn't add this method in here. So public static void, or actually we can just copy this show achievements and just paste it here, change the name of this method to show leaderboards UI. And we want to so do social dot show leaderboards UI or leaderboard UI. Now we can go back to our UI script actually, and show leaderboards UI. We also need to have a method which is going to be updating this text points text. So this is again going to be a public void update points text. And we are going to change the value of the points text text field or text property. So points txt dot text equals manager script dot instance or not instance because this is a static property. So we can just call manager script counter dot to string. And now we actually need to call this method in the UI script from manager script whenever we are incrementing a counter or just changing the value of a counter. So UI script dot instance update points text and also here UI script instance update points text. Awesome. Now we just need to create a manager object. So create empty manager and we are going to drag each and every script on here, except for the one generated by the plugin. The points text field is going to be this points txt. And now we need to connect buttons to their respective methods in the UI script. So for example, get point button is going to call a method on the manager game object in the script UI script and the name of the method is get point. Now if we want to test if everything works all right, we cannot do it directly from the unity editor. However, we can at least test the UI here. So we're going to launch the game, press on get point, and this text should change to one. And yeah, it does change to one and two, three, four. And when we press restart, it should go back to zero. And yes, it does go back to zero. To properly test our game, we are going to need to build it in order to be able to communicate with Google's servers. So we're going to go to build settings and build. And uh, we're going to build it here. We're just going to call it tutorial and press on save. Now we can test this APK inside an emulator. And I am using an amazing emulator called Nox. The link is in the video description. So I've already installed it. And when we go to see the achievements, you can see that the incremental achievement is already on 10% because I've already tested it. So I've clicked two times on the increment button. Standard achievement is locked and I have no points on the leaderboard. When I press on get point and restart, I should have one point in the leaderboard. And yes, I do. Let's press five times on the get point, press restart. And I have five points on the leaderboard. Amazing. Now let's press one more time on increment. I should have 15%. Now I have 20%. And when I press like crazy on the increment button, it's 85%. So now three more times and it should get unlocked. So one, two, and three, and achievement unlocked. Incremental achievement. Amazing. So now it is unlocked. And when I press on unlock, it's gonna 
unlock the standard achievement, the non-incrementable achievement. So unlock, and achievement unlocked, standard achievement. So everything works as expected. If you want to get the code written in this tutorial, you can do so by clicking on the link in the video description. The next part is going to be about implementing saved games, which is a lot of fun, so stay tuned for that, and subscribe if you don't want to miss it. I hope that this video helped you, if it did, don't forget to give this video a like, and also share it. If you want to get notified of every new video, hit the bell button, and also follow me on social media, and see you in the next video!